of Titus. Well, actually, the book of 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter number 1. I want to mention to you a verse in, in Titus before we go there. And before we do anything else, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this good grace. God, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity again to come into the house of God and to call upon you. God, we pray right now, God, that the sweet spirit of God would move through this place. God, forgive me of my sins. I pray, God, that I be clean before thee. And I pray that you forgive me of my sins and my failures, God, that we might preach and rightly divide the word of truth. Father, I pray for that one here that may be lost without you. I pray, God, you touch them with the spirit of conviction Lord, that they might come to know thee. And God, we pray, Father, for those here that may be discouraged. I pray that you'd encourage them in the Lord. And pray, Father, that each one of us, when we leave here today, God will, Lord, dear Jesus, be more inclined to serve the Lord and do your will. Be more encouraged in the Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I, I want to preach to you a message, and I'm not exactly sure which direction I was going. I studied one thing and then got to studying something else. So I have before me two messages this morning, and uh, I may preach both of them before the day is over. Amen. But I, I began to think last night while I was studying, and I, I was studying there some in First uh, Timothy, but in the book of, we're living in a day where doctrine of the scripture has been very much neglected and I listen to some people you know that are you know that are big names on the radio or television whatever and the the doctrines of the scripture are neglected and that's what our Christianity is founded upon is is great doctrines of the word of God now, the Bible declares to me as a preacher that I'm to preach the whole counsel of God. And that means whatever it says in Genesis 1 through the last verse in the book of the Revelation, I'm supposed to claim the whole word of God. And I'll spend my life trying to do that because I'll never, I'll never preach the entire word of God, but I will, I will try to. I will do my best. I will declare all that I, ha I can in the amount of time I can that I have on this earth to declare to you as your pastor the whole counsel of God. And in that counsel of God, we, there's a lot of instruction. There's a lot of promises. There's a lot of, uh, of uh, uh, things to preach. But if we neglect to preach and to use uh, sound doctrines of the Scripture, and there's ten major doctrines of the Bible, and I'm not going to get into all those today, but if I, if I neglect to preach unto you the sound doctrine of the Word of God, I've let you down. And I began to, as I began to study last night, this thought in, in Titus came to me. And as I was studying, and let me just go, I'm just going to go as the Lord leads. We may not ever make it to 1 Timothy. But if we don't, we're doing what God wants us to do. Amen? So you pray for us this morning. The book of Titus tells us this. And Paul is talking to, uh, you know, Paul is speaking here, and he's telling Titus, he said, look, he said, but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Speak though those things that become sound doctrine. Now, I can stand up here all day and tell you all kinds of stories and tell you, tell you all kinds of things, and, uh, you know, I can, I can say stuff that will make you feel good. And the Word of God should do that. The Word of God's going to do one of two things, my friend. It's either going to draw you closer to God or you're going to hear it and you're going to drift farther from God because you don't want to adhere to the Scripture. But when the Word of God tells me something and I adhere to that and I follow that, then I'm drawn closer to the God of heaven. So what are some things that, that, that uh, we speak of this morning that become sound doctrine? First of all, the preaching of the gospel is sound doctrine. Should I neglect as a preacher to preach the sound doctrine of the gospel, then I have neglected the word of God. And I believe first and foremost the preaching of the gospel is what's necessary and needful in our day to day. In this day that we live in, we need the preaching of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Verse 3, For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that He was buried, and that He rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. This is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe that Jesus was born of a virgin. We believe that He lived a sinless life. We believe that He became sin for us on the cross of Calvary. We believe that he died there, was buried, and rose again. That is the gospel, my friend. And should I neglect to preach that, then I've neglected to preach to you the whole counsel of God and sound doctrine. The world today hasn't heard the gospel. Thousands, well, no, I'll go further than that. Millions in America have not heard the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Millions. My son is, is about to journey out to the uh, northwest here in the next week and he's going out there to a town that doesn't have a, a, a church to go to doesn't have a fundamental work to go to doesn't have a place where they can go and experience the preaching of the word of God he's going there going to set up a tent they're going to canvas the community have meetings and so the gospel will be sent to those people that have never heard the gospel I've spoken to people right here in our area that did not know what the gospel was. I've spoken to people that believe in God but they do not understand what the gospel is. I'm telling you, friend, we're living in a day when the preaching of the gospel, the doctrine of the gospel has been neglected and you and I need to make up the hedge, amen. We need to make up the gap and proclaim the gospel to a lost and dying world. Who else is going to do it, friend? Who else is going to declare the gospel to, to Mars Hill community? Who else is going to declare the gospel? It's up to you and I. You say there's preachers, there's a preaching, and there's churches all over there. Yes, they are. But that does, we should not neglect our duty and our ability and our charge that we are to preach the gospel and to declare the gospel to our community. Amen? How many of you live on a specific street? Raise your hand. Or a cove or whatever. Everybody lives on somewhere different about it around here. Could I say that there's probably someone in the church that lives on every, every street, every, every road around here in Mars Hill? Somebody probably lives pretty close around every road. You say, why do you want to know that preacher? I've got an idea. I've got a plan. Where that we as believers, we as as church members might rightly proclaim the gospel, the doctrine of the gospel of Christ to all our community. Would you be interested in that? Raise your hand. Would you be interested in getting the gospel and knowing that we have touched the lives of people in our community simply by letting them have the gospel? Well, you say everybody around here knows the gospel. I doubt it. I doubt it very seriously. Years ago, and I'm talking 15 years ago, I went door to door in a community and I went up and down that, that, that community and I counted mailboxes, see how many mailboxes up and down them roads. And then I began to, to venture to visit those mailboxes with a lot of help. But I run into all kinds of people that never heard the gospel. I'm talking 15 years ago. And if it was that way then, surely it must be worse now to people that have not heard the gospel. I walked up to one house and knocked on the door. I had my son Brian with me. He was just a little fella. And uh, I walked up and knocked on that door, and, and this cat come to the door, and he said, not a real cat, but that's what I'm calling this guy. And he came to the door, and he was real strange looking and was looking real strange at me and real strange at my son. And I'm feeling real strange, and the hair standing up on the back of my neck. But I went through with it anyway. I said, sir... Where, do you attend church anywhere in the community? I'm just trying to find out some information. And he says, my church is up in the woods. My church is in the trees. I thought I've flown this kite as far as I want to fly it. I said, sir, you're invited to church. Have a good day. And I left. He had no idea what I was talking about. I didn't have opportunity to share. He didn't want to hear. I walked up to one person's door. They said, I'm such and such religion. 
and that's what I am. People either don't want to hear, and I've talked to people that said, I don't know what that is. I've talked to people that told me, well, I believe in God, but I don't know about this Jesus and salvation, and I don't know about all of that. And I'm not talking about somewhere in a far off land. I'm talking about right here in western North Carolina. I've talked to people. So where's the letdown be? I'll tell you where a lot of the letdown has happened. It's right there in that pulpit. Amen? And I'm using that as a symbolic. It may not necessarily be here at Gables Creek, and it won't be as long as I'm here, but in that pulpit across America, the doctrine of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ has been neglected, and now people are dying and going to hell having never heard the simple truth of the scripture. Did they have opportunity? I don't know. But we need not neglect the gospel, the preaching of the great gospel of the doctrine of salvation. Now listen, does that mean everybody has to be a preacher? Listen, if you proclaim the gospel, you are a preacher, male or female, boy or girl. If you are proclaim the gospel, you are putting forth the word of God. You are declaring the word of God, and you're giving that message. Many people say the only preaching anyone ever hears is the life you lived before them, and I believe that. Our life will either preach the gospel or it will discourage people from the gospel. God help us that we as believers would understand the gospel and would let our lights be the gospel to a lost and dying world. And when God gives us utterance and gives us voice and gives us speech to say to them, do you know where you're going to spend eternity? Sure, they may laugh at you. Surely they may scoff at you. But I'm telling you, we're living in the last days. That's another doctrine. But we're living in the last days. And surely, friend, if you've got someone you know that's going to hell, you better try to get them before it's too late. You better try to tell them. You better warn them. If your family member, if your friend was traveling uh, traveling uh, down the highway down here and you and it had been a terrible rain and the bridge was washed out and they didn't know it. But you knew it and they were traveling down through there. The rain had gone, the storm had gone, the roads were dry, the sun was bright and they were traveling down the highway and all of a sudden you knew that they were going to run off in that river and get killed. Would you not do your best to stop them from running off in that river? Listen, friend, people are doing worse. People are doing much worse than driving off of a bridge into the water. They're going off the, the cliff into hell, and nobody seems to care about that. Lord, help me. God, help me. I'm in the same place that you are. Lord, help me to have a burden to tell people of the doctrine of salvation. And I'm introducing a message that I'm not going to get to. I'll just tell you. But in this part of, of the sound doctrine, what else should we be preaching? We should be preaching to those that know the gospel, that know the plan of salvation, that have been born again by the grace of God, which is me and which is the majority of you today. We should be telling people and encouraging people that we should earnestly contend for the faith. Amen? We have been beaten down by this world. God's people have, have let themselves be belittled by this world where we're afraid to stand up for what we believe. Lord, help us that we'd get some backbone about us and that we'd have some courage about us by the help of God that you and I would earnestly contend for the faith. You young folks that are going to school, I know you face all kinds of opposition to the things of God, but I would encourage you to do something. Amen. You do right no matter what. Dr. Bob Jones used to say this, do right if the stars fall from the sky. Isn't that what he said, Sister Libby? If the, if, do right no matter do what's right. And I'm saying if the stars fall from the sky, you do what's right, young people. You do what right, what's right with, between you and God. It doesn't matter what man says. I'd rather obey God than man. Amen? I'd rather obey God than man. And we should contend for the faith in the book of Jude, chapter 1, and verse number 3. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation... It was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you 
that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Listen, we've got a great faith. Your faith and my faith, your salvation and my, hey, it's worth standing up for. Amen? The God of heaven gave his dear son to die on the cross of Calvary for you and I. Let me tell you something, friend. It's worth standing for. Our faith, our salvation is worth contending for. It's worth standing for. It's worth standing up in front of the atheist crowd. You know, this bunch is, I, I get so ill at them. And yet they're doing just exactly what they believe, sister. This atheist crowd, you say, well, they're, they're doing all they can to get. They're doing what they believe. We ought, we're more than they are. We ought to stand up. If we'll stand up, they won't win the victory. Amen. This bunch of, they, you know, I get so upset when they tell people they can't fly the American flag in the classroom or they can't do this with the American flag makes me so mad. There's more of us than there are of them. Why aren't we standing up? I, I'm a real patriot. Why aren't we standing up? And there's those that say, well, we can't mention God or Jesus in school. There's more of us than there are of them. Why aren't we standing up? And the Constitution of the United States gives me certain rights. Amen. And by the help of God, no matter what man says, I'm going to try to exercise my constitutional right to free speech, amen. Oh, there's a lot going on today where, where preachers are trying to be shut up and where we're not going to be allowed to say certain things in the pulpit, amen. Lock me up, put me in jail, amen. I want to exercise my rights to preach the gospel and to proclaim the gospel and to contend for the faith because it's worth standing for. Friend, what Jesus did for you on the cross of Calvary is worth standing up for. Amen. But it seems like we're content to say, well, it's the way the world is. It's the way the world's going. And it's going that way because that's what we've been saying for the last 50 years. Well, it's the way the times are going. Now, I'll tell you something. I want to go out of here. Amen. When I leave this world, I want to go out of here having been known for contending for the faith, for standing for what's right. God help us that we would contend for the faith. And I guess number three in my introduction, we as believers and me as a preacher most certainly should preach against false doctrine. False doctrine. That that is contrary to to the doctrines of the scripture. There's many religions out there that do not adhere to the gospel and do not adhere to the doctrines of the word of God. They're wrong. I'll be the first to tell you they're wrong. They're false doctrines and you yourself need to run from those that are, that are uh, pressing and pushing false doctrines. You know how I'm saved? By salvation, by grace, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> I'm saved by salvation, by grace, through the Lord Jesus Christ, and not of works, lest any man should boast. Anyone teaches anything different is a false teacher and a false prophet. And you need to run from him. Amen. There's no, there's no other person wherein a man can be saved except that person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Someone comes to you with the doctrine that you must believe in someone else other than Christ, you ditch it and you tell them that's false doctrine and you run from it. Amen. My high priest is the Lord Jesus Christ and I go directly to my high priest. Amen. Without going through a man. Amen. Y'all don't get quiet on me. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. This is, this is, the right doctrine. And we as believers should stand up against false doctrine. Well, we're all going to get to heaven. We're just going different ways. If you Listen, you're going to heaven if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and that's the only way you're going to heaven. Any other way, you're going to die and go to hell without God. And if you believe that today, I'm warning you, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And if you don't, you're going to die and go to hell without hope. 
Amen. False doctrine, doctrine has ruined many today. False doctrine has crept into the church. People add to the scripture in many ways. Well, you can be saved, but you must do this. I want to tell you something. The only thing that I had to do to get me to God was believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I was baptized when I got saved. I was baptized after a while in a place where most people would say, Preacher, let's wait till it gets a little warmer to do that. Amen. You know why? Because when I got baptized, I was baptized on the side of Rims Creek, not in the creek. And you know, I often have regretted that, not being baptized in that creek. But I was baptized in a little pond on the side of Rims Creek. And that morning there was a heavy frost on the ground. But did that prevent me from getting baptized? No. And I'm glad for that. Now we've got a warm baptistry where we put people in. That's just fine. It's still doing the same job. But guess what? My getting baptized in a cold pond of water did not secure my salvation. Woo-hee! Amen. I'm glad I'm born again by the grace of God. I'm glad it's not by my baptism, but it's by my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. But there's those that have entertained the thought and let it creep into the church that in order to get to heaven, you've got to be baptized. No, that's not it, friend. The thief on the cross, he didn't get baptized, but Jesus said today, thou shalt be of me in paradise. Hey, man, I'm glad I'm saved not by, not by baptism, but I'm glad I'm saved by the grace of God. But baptism is very important. Amen? Amen. Baptism is very important that people be baptized so that it shows the world that you've died out to the old things of the world and you're risen again into new life in Christ Jesus. Amen. But it don't save me. Good works, teaching and preaching has entered into the church and people say, well, I'll get to heaven, but it's only if I do my good works. No, you'll get to heaven because you believe God. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I'm glad salvation is that simple, aren't you? I don't want to complicate the Word of God. I don't want to complicate the Scripture and say, yeah, salvation is by grace, but I can't sin. Amen. Glory to God, I'm saved and on my way to heaven because I believed in Christ and that's it. Amen. If it wasn't, I'd, I'd die and go to hell most days. Ooh, preacher, did you say that? I did. Because there's a lot of people believe that if you sin, that you automatically, if you die, you're going to go to hell. There's not a day goes by that I don't do something wrong. I'm looking around to see if anybody's got that smile on their face like, well, preacher, I do. I'm so good. I don't ever sin. I don't ever mess up. You just did because you just lied. Amen. Let me tell you something, friend. We all fall short of the glory of God. God didn't save us and make us perfect. God saved us, and we're still dealing with that old nature inside of us. And that old nature does not want to do right. My old nature don't ever want to do right. And if I feed that old flesh, if I feed that old man, and that let that old nature rise up without getting it under the blood of Jesus, guess what happened? I mess up. I'll see in shores of the world. I'll do something wrong. I'll get mad at my wife. That's the worst thing a man can do is get mad at his wife. Amen. When it comes to, yeah. Because your whole, if you're married and you get mad at your wife, your whole life is upside down until it's made right. Amen, men. Amen. Amen. And as long as that's all right, as long as that's all right, the whole world is well. Oh, my friend, let me tell you something today. There's something that you battle in your life every day. There's something in your life that you deal with every day that the devil knows your weak spot and he tries his best to get you to go that place every day. And when you do, you've sinned against God. And you know it. You know what it is. And I know what mine is. But by the help of God, hey, man, if I do it, I go to God and sin. Because what does he tell us in his word? First John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's what? Faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That verse is talking to believers. Friend, if we confess our sins. So it's not if you sin, but it says if we confess our sins. 
So I'm sorry if you feel like you're living perfect. I just let the air out of your bubble with Scripture to back it up. Amen? Because if we confess our sins, you don't confess nothing today. Listen, I felt so backslid before I confessed things I hadn't even done. Amen? Because I wanted to make sure I was right with God. Amen? Oh, my friend today, the doctrine of the, the doctrines of God and the doctrine against falsehood and, and the doctrine against people that will tell you anything other than the scripture or the word of God, you need to flee away from, you need to get away from. We need to preach sound doctrine of the truths of the scripture and of the falsehood that's being preached to the world. And I guess I got one more and I'm going to be through. We as believers, and me as a preacher in particular, ought to be willing to stand up against those that preach false doctrine. It's one thing to preach it and one thing to proclaim it, but we on the other side ought to be willing to stand up and say, you're wrong. Otherwise, we might in our mind just say, well, I know they're wrong. Somebody will tell them. I've come to the place in my life, I've come to the place in my ministry that if you're preaching false doctrine and I hear you, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm going to make a scene and get up and walk out on you. Or I'm just liable because now I don't much care anymore. I'm just about going to get up and tell them, hey, that's a lie. Y'all don't believe that. Oh, preacher, that would disturb someone. Let it just, somebody needs to disturb somebody. Amen. Somebody needs to stir that pot and get people to think it for themselves. If it's not in the Word of God, if it's not sound doctrine from the Scripture, guess what? It's wrong. Simply it's wrong. I got up and walked out on a fellow one night. I mean, I don't, I don't care. I got my whole family up and walked out. Now, I didn't make a scene. If it happened today, I'd probably just make a scene. I'd probably just go ahead and stir it up and let it blow wide open and amen, maybe something good come out of it because nothing good came out of that. But the man stood there in the pulpit and said every Christian ought to spend some time in hell. Now, if I was to get up here and say that, what would y'all do? Now that's what he meant too. He meant to say they said every believer ought to go to hell and spend some time in hell. My Bible teaches me that I'm saved from the wrath of God through Jesus. Amen? That's false doctrine. I got my family up and we marched out of there. It got quiet as we went out the door. And I don't remember if that was the last time or not, but if it wasn't, it was pretty close to the last time I went back. Was that it, honey? My wife remembers better than that. That's the last time. I ain't putting up that. There's a time for lots of things, friend, but there's no time to preach false doctrine in the church. Amen? Amen. So I don't agree with what you said this morning. You're, you're, you're very well. Amen? You're very welcome to come to me and tell me why you don't think I've done what's right today. You're very welcome to come to me and say, Preacher, I don't believe, and I'll explain to you why I preach what I preach. Amen? We're living in the last days. I don't have time. I don't have time to babysit. Amen? I don't have time to babysit the gospel. I've got to proclaim the gospel. I've got to proclaim the message of the word of God. I've got to adhere myself to the doctrines of this scripture because it's what I've got. Amen. This is what I'm living by in these last days. This is what you need to live by. If you're going to make it, you're going to have to be strong in the power of his mind. What do you mean make it, preacher? Well, Y'all had your head in the sand that you don't understand that um, that Americans are about to face the worst times of persecution that we ever have faced in America? Ah, oh, preacher, that ain't going to happen. Listen to me. Hello? When we begin to have discussions, and that happened years ago, about whether it's right or wrong for a man to marry a man, boy, we're down the trail bad. And that's coming up in the Supreme Court. It will be ruled on next month about whether they're going to do, redefine the definition of marriage and say it's all right for men to marry men and women to marry. Why did God, why did God destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? 
The same reason. Do you think that America is good, too good that we won't suffer for such as that? And for people like me and people like you that will stand up against If we stand up against it and we stand, no, that's not right. Do you think we're not going to suffer persecution just for that? And now all across the, all across the country, you know, I saw this other day and I liked it. They, the, the Bible is out in school, but they're begging for them in prison. And I know that to be the fact. I'm very, I'm, I, it's, it's easier for me to go down to jail and hand out a Bible than it is to go to a school and hand out gospel tracts where mine is. We got that all backwards, my friend. If we had it the other way around, there wouldn't be that many in prison today. Are you going to stand? See, I, I got in the pulpit, I, I was confused. I just tell you, God's not the author of confusion. I said, Lord, I'm going to do what you want me to do today. No matter, I'm going to do what you want me to do. But listen, are you going to stand or are you going to just sit back, on your, sit back on your thumb and your hand and say, well, whatever will be, will be. Friend, it's not like that anymore. We can't take that attitude. We can't have that attitude as a church, as a people. We can't have the attitude that everything's going to run smoothly because we've got to be, we got to stand. We've got to contend for the faith. <laughs> I'm through, but I do want to give you five things real quickly. Okay, and I promise you that'll be real quick because I'm through. It is our duty to publicly and plainly Denounce false teaching. Number two, we should with certainty proclaim our faith. We should, number three, with all boldness tell others and stand in this last day for what we believe. Number, five, number four, we should with all boldness be in season and out of season, always ready to do the work of the Lord, always ready to proclaim at any given moment what Jesus has done for us. Four things. I can't count. But let me ask you something. Are you going to earnestly contend for the faith? There's parents in here raising children. Listen, better raise those children to serve the Lord. Better If you don't train your children, the world will. You hear me? If you don't raise your children in the church, the world will raise your children away from church. You must train up a child in the way they should go. I'm telling you, friend, we must serve the Lord. This is a very, very urgent message to you today. You must earnestly contend for the faith. Father, we thank you for the word of God. Lord, we never got to what Oh, maybe you'll let us preach that another time. But God, I pray that you'd help us, Lord, that we wouldn't stray from the sound teaching, the sound doctrine, the Word of God, and that in these last days we would stand for truth and for what's right. For someone here that don't know you today that's lost, God, may today they come to know you through the gospel. For someone here that's cold on you, Lord, desires to get closer to you, may they... Lord, respond to the invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. While every head's bowed, no one looking around. Friend, I've preached to you exactly what the Lord laid on my heart. I wonder if there's someone here this morning say, Preacher, I, I don't know. I'm lost. Oh, I've heard of God, but I've never been saved. I've never trusted Christ as my Savior. I wonder if you slip up your hand and say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm lost. While we wait just a moment, is there one?